Hey guys, Jay here with Word of Advice TV, and in this video I want to show you how to replace a contactor in an air conditioner, or the condenser unit. But before I do that, I just want to point out that the contactor is one of the parts that's most often replaced by mistake, when there's really nothing even wrong with it. So if you're watching this video because you're simply replacing your contactor because you're not sure what else it can be, I would recommend watching my other video where I go over, you know, air conditioner troubleshooting step by step, where to start, and the video is like half an hour long, I cover pretty much everything. Chances are, you might not even need to get any parts at all and you can fix your air conditioner. So I would suggest watching that before you replace your contactor. Or if you're watching this video because your contactor plunger is not pulling in, that might not mean that the contactor is bad. Actually, there's a lot of other reasons why that can be happening besides a bad contactor. So if you're replacing your contactor because the plunger is not pulling in, I would recommend watching my other video where I talk about 10 reasons why the contactor plunger does not pull in, and only one of those is because the contactor coil is bad. And lastly, if you're watching this video because you're already replacing your contactor, you have all the wires off and you forgot to take a picture of them, and you forgot to maybe label all the wires before you pulled them all off, and now you're not sure where they go, this is probably not the right video either. I would recommend watching my video where I go over basic air conditioner wiring, where I show where all the wires are supposed to go. That video will help you out more. But anyways, let's begin. So here I have two contactors. One is a two pole contactor, and the other one is a one pole contactor, or a single pole. Single pole, double pole. And as you can see, one is rated for 30 amps. FLA stands for full load amps. This one's a 30. This one's a 40. So if you're replacing a 30 amp, you can either replace it with a 30 or something higher. Do not go lower. So basically all this means is that this contactor can handle up to 30 amps. Whereas this one is a little more heavy duty, it can handle up to 40 amps. So you can go higher, but don't go lower. So you can replace a 30 with a 40 if you wanted to. Also, most contactors will be labeled. I don't know if you can see it, but right here it says L1. On the bottom on this side it says L2, over here it says T1 and T2. So this is where the line comes in, this is where the power comes in from your disconnect, line 1, line 2, and terminal 2 and terminal 1, that's where everything else hooks up to. So that's the single pole contactor, and if you look at my double pole contactor, it actually has a cover over the plungers. Usually it's just two screws holding it. Let me just take this cover off real quick. Okay, so I got the screws out. The cover just comes right off. I can't find anywhere, you know, L1 and T1 and T2 and L2, so it's not really labeled. In that case, this means that it completely does not matter if the contactor goes this way or this way. So L1 and L2, the power wires, they can either come in on this side or on this side, that won't matter. And as you can see, this is a two-pole contactor, which means it has two of these plungers, whereas this one only has one. And like I mentioned previously, it doesn't matter which contactor you get. The only time it would matter is if you have a crankcase heater on your compressor. The only way to see that would be to visually verify. That would be to open up the top of your unit and look at your compressor towards the bottom if it has a crankcase heater on it. If it does, then you definitely want to get a single pole contactor. So if you already have a single pole contactor in there, replace it with a single pole contactor. Because see how this one has one break? When the plunger is up, there's no power going through. This one does not have a break, it's just a straight bar. That means that you always have 120 volts just sitting here all the time, it goes through. And that is actually needed for the crankcase heater to work properly. And that's all I'm gonna say about this. If you really wanna know more about how exactly does that work, I have a really long video where I talk about how to read an AC wiring diagram, and I explain that more in more detail in that video. So if you're interested, you can check that out. But yeah, long story short, if you have a crankcase heater, then you want to replace a single pole with a single pole. Otherwise, it does not matter. If you don't have a crankcase heater, you can either do a single pole or a double pole. The only real difference is, this one's a little bit more heavy duty. Once in a while, this contactor can get welded shut, where it'll pull in and it will not release. When you have two plungers like this, it's a lot harder for it to get welded shut because the other one will exhibit more force to pull it back out. All right, so let's begin. I'm gonna replace my one pole contactor with a two pole contactor. I'm gonna go ahead and leave the cover off for now and just put it on when we're done installing it. And of course, before we begin, we have to turn off power. And to be safe, really just turn off power everywhere. 
So first of all, go to your circuit breaker panel inside the house, or maybe it's outside on yours, and turn off the air conditioner. It's usually gonna be a two pole breaker, a bigger breaker, turn that off, and also turn off the breaker that's going to your air handler or your furnace. Turn both of those off, and then when you go outside by your condenser unit at the air conditioner, find your disconnect box and pull the switch out or the plug out. If you have a breaker, turn the breaker off, or if you have a lever on the side, turn that off as well. And usually having the furnace off is enough, but just in case, you can turn your thermostat to the off position as well. After you have everything off, I would still verify with a meter, if you have a meter, or a voltage pen, because electricians, when they put stuff in, sometimes they don't do it quite correctly, or whoever installed your electrical stuff, sometimes the breaker panels are not labeled correctly, and sometimes the disconnect fuse or the disconnect plug is actually bypassed. So next thing you know, you know, you're sticking a screwdriver in there, and next thing you know, that thing is welded to the cabinet of the air conditioner. So always double check if you have the opportunity to do so. And I'll show you quick how to do it. You set your meter to voltage, and then you follow your electrical whip coming from the disconnect and see where it comes into the contactor on which side. So here's the inside of my condenser unit. There's my contactor. The electrical whip comes in on this side and the power goes into this side of the contactor. So as you can see, I have a single pole contactor. There's one leg, 120 volts, and here's the other leg coming in right there. If I put my meter leads on either of these screws, if the unit was live, I would have around 240 volts. But now that I have my power off, as you can see, I have zero volts. So I don't have any power. I've verified that I'm completely off. And if my thermostat was calling for cooling, for example, if I put my meter leads on the contactor coil, this side is the low voltage, I would have somewhere around 27 volts. But since I have the furnace off and the thermostat off, as you can see, I have zero volts there as well. And last but not least, after you're done doing all that, the last thing you wanna do is discharge your capacitor. The capacitor is almost like a battery, so it holds a charge. So even though your power is off, there might still be some charge in here, especially since I have a hard start hooked up. And the way you discharge the capacitor to make sure there's nothing left in it is to short out the terminals between each other. So take a screwdriver or a nut driver with an insulated handle and just stick it between the sections on that dual run capacitor. Just like that, make sure they all touch. And that's how you short it out. And since you couldn't really tell what I was doing there, I have a spare capacitor in my unit. So basically you'd be shorting out the terminals like this. Typically you would go from Herm to Common, and then from Fan to Common, and that just discharges any charge that may be stored in there. And if you see a little bit of a spark, that is normal because like I said, it holds a charge, so it might spark a little bit on you. All right, now that we've done all that, we're ready to replace our contactor. We discharge our capacitor. We know there's absolutely no power at the contactor itself. First of all, just pull off the low voltage wires. They're typically gonna be thinner wires they're going to be different colors mine's yellow and blue so pull them off it can be a little hard with your fingers so i usually use a needle nose if you have some otherwise you can just try to you know keep wiggling them until it comes off but that loosens up the connection a little bit so once you have the low voltage wires off these are the ones that go to the contactor coil so here's the contactor coil right here once this thing energizes that's what pulls the plunger in so I pulled off the low voltage wires, and by the way, it does not matter which wire goes where. So the yellow wire can go either here or here, just make sure they're on opposite ends of course. And it also does not matter which terminal it goes on either, because as you can see, these two terminals are connected. So it won't matter if you put your wire connector on this side or this side. Another thing I want to note is that really old contactors will have these contactor coil terminals all on one side instead of opposite sides like this one. Okay, and next you can either take a picture of all these wires and then pull them all off, or you can leave this side on. So here's the power wires coming in on this side. You'll want to take those off. My nut driver doesn't fit, so I'll use a flathead. Okay, so I have my two power wires off. They're both right here. I took those two screws off. And what I like to do is to just leave this whole side on and then put them on after I have the new contactor in there. And usually it'll be either red or yellow on one side. 
and black on the other. They're going to be all color coded. So see how blacks are all on this side? And then we got a black on this side as well. Whereas on the other side we have reds. And on the opposite side there's a red as well. So everything's kind of on one side. So in my case I'm going to just remember where all the wires went. But if that's hard for you to remember I would take a picture before you pull any of the wires off. So there's one more wire that's actually on here as well. I'm pretty sure that's from the fan motor. So my red and my purple went to this side and I had two blacks that were going on this side. So I pulled those off and now I'll take the screws out from the base that hold the contactor in. Usually it's 5 16 screws that hold it in there. So you take both of those screws out And you will be reusing the screws, so don't lose them. Mine are right there. So as you can see, I still have this side connected. I can just push it out of the way. And put my new contactor in. Using the same screw holes. Okay, so we got the new contactor in. Now we can go ahead and hook up the wires. I'll go ahead and hook up my contactor coil first, the low voltage. So those wires are in. Next, I want to put in my line voltage, the two 120 hot legs, the red and the black. Actually, I'll put in this purple first. And by the way, if you notice that you have a really loose connection, like you see mine right here, it just slides in very easy, comes out even easier. That's bad. Loose connections create heat and that will melt your wire and the connector and pretty soon the air conditioner will probably stop working. Or in my case, the fan would stop working. So if you see a really loose connection, um, it's if it's really brittle and like cracked and stuff, you can snip it off and put a new connector on. Mine's actually pretty good, it's just loose. So I can take my needle nose and just crimp it a little bit so it makes a snugger connection. Don't crimp it all the way down, otherwise, you know, it's not going to be able to go on at all. But if you accidentally do that, just stick a flathead screwdriver in there to um, space it back out. There you go, that goes in much tighter now. Now I have a nice snug connection. As for these guys, the old contactor had these kind of connectors, you know, where you put the screw over it. Whereas this one, you just have a flathead screw that kind of squashes it down. So let me back these screws out first. And you have two options. You can either snip this connector off and then strip the end of the wire and put it in there or you can just take this connector and just crush it with a needle nose or some pliers just like that it's almost like a solid piece of wire so I'll go ahead and do that to the other side as well so now they both look like that and you can go ahead and stick those two connectors underneath those flathead screws. And of course I better not forget this other black wire. I'll fold it in like that so it's not too long. Stick it in, in the same place. And then you want to tighten it down real good. Because like I was saying, loose connections equals heat, which leads to burnt wires. So make it nice and snug, but don't overkill, because everything around it is plastic. If you, if you torque too hard, you're probably going to end up breaking something. These contactors aren't the most quality made parts. They're not too expensive either. By the way, I'm going to have a bunch of Amazon links in the description to AC parts, including single pole and double pole contactors. If you need to use that as a reference, just look in the description. So we got this side in, and the other side is simple. 
you know, blacks will go to one side, reds will go to the other side. Or, you know, if you're not comfortable with doing that, you could just go wire by wire, pull one wire off at a time. I'm just gonna go ahead and pull all of them off. Okay, so we got all the wires off. And with this side, let's just go ahead and go with option B for this one. So I'll snip the connectors off. Those round ones. And then you strip the end of the wire. You don't want to leave too much. I mean, you don't want it to be too long. About this long is enough. Just so it goes in under that flathead screw. So here are my two stripped wires. I'll put the black under the black side. And when you're sliding it in, see how a couple of the strands are sticking out? Try to keep them all in one place so they don't go all over. Slide it in there neatly. Tighten it down so it's snug. And then do the same to the other side. Then plug in the remaining wires. Black goes on that side, and then I had a red wire. That goes on this side. This one's loose too. I mean, it shouldn't be this easy to take it off and on. Look at that, that just, it's almost like it's not even on there at all. So, same as the other one. I'll just crimp the connector ever so slightly on both sides. And put that back on. There you go, that was, that was good. You wanna have a little bit of resistance when you're putting it on so it's a good connection. And you can't just slide it right off. You gotta put some back into it to take it off. That's how it should be. So we have everything hooked up. And now as a test, I'm actually gonna turn everything back on to disconnect all the breakers and the thermostat, just so you can see these two plungers pull in and the air conditioner should come on. And I just want to show you why I replaced my contactor to begin with. My contactor was good, it was still working, but just look at the difference between the new single pole contactor and mine. See how it's all burnt and stuff? What happens is with time, contactors get pitted and just like wires, they start making a loose connection. So there's two things that can happen. One, the contactor might not pull in all the way and it won't make a good connection so the air conditioner won't turn on, or two, it'll pull in and because of the heat, it'll actually get welded. It'll heat up to a point where it'll melt to the contactor bars on either side. And this plunger will remain in this pulled in position and your air conditioner will keep running and running and running and potentially freeze all over if your indoor fan turns off. And while we're looking at contactors, I just want to point out that a lot of times when a contactor fails, what happens is this coil will get welded together it's supposed to be a big winding of wires or a wire wound up. And what happens is they short out and this all these wires literally get melted together. So if you see this all melted, that most likely means your contactor coil is bad. You can check it with a meter as well. It should be over eight ohms. So if you put your meter leads here and here, you know, you should have over eight ohms resistance. Usually it's somewhere between nine and 20. I have a video on how to check a contactor with a meter. If you want more information on that, you can check that out. But yeah, I only replaced my contactor as a preventative maintenance type of thing. This one was still working, but being that it's all burnt like that, you know, my chances are a lot higher that something will go wrong. Either it'll get welded together, or one of these days it just simply won't pull in all the way and won't work. Well guys, and that is how you would replace a contactor in an air conditioner. If you have any further tips or suggestions on how to replace a contactor, maybe I missed some little fine points, that would be awesome if you could share that with us in the comments below. Or if you have replaced your contactor in the past and have an interesting experience with it, bad or good, please share that with us as well. Thank you so much for watching this video. Don't forget to mash that like button on the way out and we'll see you next time. And if you're still here and not in the comment section below, these two prisoners 
they were fighting for the last hamburger in the cafeteria and one of them says you know what instead of fighting how about this if I'm gonna give you a series of riddles if you answer them all correctly you can have the hamburger if you get one wrong I'll have the hamburger that guy says sure I'm good at riddles bring it on so the guy starts he tells him okay so there's an airplane flying in the sky it's carrying 600 bricks one brick falls out of the airplane how much bricks are left on the plane that guy says easy 599 he says correct next riddle how do you put an elephant into a fridge in three moves he says easy one open the fridge two put the elephant in the fridge three close the fridge he says right next riddle now how do you put a giraffe in the fridge in four moves the other dude says very easy man open the fridge take the elephant out put the giraffe in close the fridge he says correct next riddle the king of all animals the lion he gathers a birthday party right he's having a birthday party he wants all the animals to attend it's mandatory everybody has to be there everybody's there except one animal one animal is not there who's missing other dude says easy dude it's the giraffe because he's in the fridge correct next riddle a grandma is about to swim across a river but that river is a home of like a hundred crocodiles will she be able to get to the other side safely or will she die the other guy says dude she's gonna get over there no problem because all the crocodiles are at the birthday party he says no there you're wrong he's like what why he's like well you remember that brick that fell out of the plane